Hi, my name is Adam Sashivsky. I'm a cinematographer. And uh, I was very excited to use the very first impression filters um, very recently on a shoot in Los Angeles for a short film called Red, White and Blue. Red, White and Blue, uh, the title of the short film I've just photographed, was sent to me um, by a writer friend of mine um, last December. Um, I'd met Nazrin on Fear the Walking Dead about three years ago, and we had immediately clicked uh, when we met. Um, and she sent me her script, and immediately I knew this was a film I wanted to be involved with and had to be made. Um, and it presented some uh, very interesting challenges, um, both technically um, and creatively, that I was very excited to get my hands on. We started to uh, discuss how we wanted to visualize this piece. Scene by scene, we would talk it through and analyze um, and try to spitball ideas on the best way to, to visualize um, this film. So by the, by the time I arrived in Los Angeles, we were very, very prepared and we had really thoroughly explored uh, what the narrative would require visually. And I had pitched to Nazrin that this is a story about two very different perspectives of the same event. And therefore, it would be so good to support that visually with two contrasting looks. I was fortunate enough to be in London at the time of the BSC show and uh, stumbled very swiftly upon the Ari stand. And there in front of me was the uh, display of the signature primes and the impression filters. And it was like the penny dropped. I saw immediately how this short film was going to succeed. And we could thereby, in the field, alter the look it completely from uh, what I would describe with the filter, and I use the 330 positive, the 330p, uh, I would describe as a kind of nine, circa 1970s uh, anamorphic lens, a really classic, beautiful um, painterly patina that, that it gives you with a wonderful roll off of focus, with a, a slightly squeezed bokeh. Um, reminiscent of those classic anamorphics, um, with a kind of very fragile feel about the image that that uh, falls off in a very beautiful way, and that that applied perfectly to my first character, who is in that, uh, a very um, difficult predicament, and then the second character who would have a contrasting point of view would be without the filter would have an enormous depth of field, would have a different aspect ratio. So we shot uh, 240 with the impression filter, and then we switched to 4.3 uh, without the impression filter. And so by doing this, I knew that within our shooting day on a practical node, we could switch the filter in and out effortlessly. There was no sense of, oh, we must return the lenses to the bench and have them recalibrate, not at all. It's like immediate. In the past, changing filters was often quite an ordeal. Out would come a giant case. It would be pouring with rain. How do you keep it dry? All these issues, changing the matte box size, potentially as you change this, the particular lens. I love the fact that this is so small and magnetized. In it goes, out it goes, no fuss. No one even knows what's happened. And right there is this beautiful effect that it has on the, on the lens that is so organic and interacts with the environment that you're photographing in a way that front filters have never done. So I love the simplicity and the, and the size of these filters. It is important to shoot wide open uh, with the impression filter to get the maximum effect and I really appreciated that. And the look was very beautiful um, on the Signature Prime. But the, I have to also credit, obviously, the sensor we shot with the Alexa 35. Now, when you put these two together, there's a very unique partnership happening. Uh, of course, this Alexa 35 sensor is exquisitely beautiful. 
And I needed a camera that would give me uh, a great um, uh, flexibility with natural light because I really wanted to use natural light. Um, but of course, shooting outside with the impression filters throughout the day, you need to maintain uh, a maximum at aperture. And we can do that through the internal NDs. But working at speed, I really felt confident having shot a lot with the Alexa 35 to use the ISO a lot um, and to really ride the ISO to maintain that maximum aperture. And that's where, for me, on a low budget, very fast shooting, very creative production like a short film uh, or a low budget movie would be the Alexa 35 and signatures, they kind of perfectly match in that way. For me, creating an identity to anything that one photographs is very important. That identity can be extremely natural or it could be very heightened. And it's what we're talking about here is finding the tone of anything that you photograph. To me, there's no point in making anything without a point of view of the filmmaker. The filmmaker needs to be as subtle as possible to not overpower the characters or the narrative, but there still needs to be a choice of aesthetics that support the architecture of the script. So in my view, one is keen to try to implement as many decisions in camera as possible to create a look that is authored. I enjoy watching authored work that has a point of view that is in sync with the narrative and the characterization and that's my aspiration when I create something uh, of my own. And so to give the control to the cinematographer of the, the look in terms of filtration, uh, in terms of grain, in terms of sharpness, these are things that Ari are really beginning to hand back to the cinematographer. For the last decade or two, um, these things have been taken away in some respects. We've been encouraged not to stamp grain, to filtrate, to do anything that could maybe take away from a change of mind later on. Uh, and if you look back at classic filmmaking, that was never the case. You, 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 you picked your film stock, you picked how it was to be processed, how you would expose it, and you committed your look right there and then. And I think there is something to be said about handing back these uh, choices to the cinematographer um, to create more and more uh, designed photography. That's not to say that it has to be uh, overpowering or overbearing. It's quite the opposite. I think the cinematographer has the experience level required to make those choices that are right for the characters and right for the narrative. And I think the impressions support that and extend that. It's handing the cinematographer the ability to minutely change the impact of a scene. If you want it to be softer or have the background be more apparent with the negative filters, I mean, that's genius. Uh, mm -hmm. you, it's, quite a, it's quite a groundbreaking moment, really, that with the with this concept of rear filtration uh, combined with a, a sensor that gives you texture if you want it or not, and, and in any degree of texture, now suddenly there's a sort of package that cinematographers have never had for a very long time. Perhaps not since the days of, of working with a lab and working with push or pull process. Um, so I'm very excited by bringing back some of these classic, uh, it's almost like classic cinema, but in a very contemporary setting. So this image behind was on our last day uh, in Los Angeles. And we had, we had looked far and wide for a merry-go-round um, that had the right elements, uh, was in the right location, would allow us to do what we needed to do. 
And finally, we found one uh, in Los Angeles itself. And uh, it, it was a very exciting day because as we started filming, the, the entire merry-go-round <laughs> behind us lost power and uh, some sparks came flying out. So we had to pivot our plans and a adjust the, the scene and adjust the angles. And this is short filmmaking. You know, you don't have an, an, uh, an army of people to prep ahead of you and make sure everything is working. And uh, you have to be very nimble and flexible. And um, credit to Nazrin, she didn't bat an eyelid. She, she rewrote the scene immediately. And, uh, you know, and I was able to alter the, the angle so that hopefully nobody will know that five minutes before this whole thing was blowing up behind us. <laughs> and this photo must have been taken right before that because I'm looking very happy. <laughs> yeah.